Hello again and welcome back to my channel. I am Melody and I am going to teach you about the organ. Remember last time we went over the Great Division. There it is in all of its glory. And it is played from this keyboard here. So now we are going to move on to this keyboard, which is called the Swell. And in a lot of organs, uh, the Great Division can be what we call unenclosed, which means it's not in a chamber, which means whatever note you play is at one volume and one volume only. That cannot be changed. But usually, sometimes, in a, in a, a uh, swell organ, you will have the swell division is uh, controlled by shades on the front of a swell chamber where all the pipes live. And so uh, that was usually controlled by one of the pedals down below. So in this organ, um, the entire organ can be controlled by the pedals, or I'll hint to a later video, does not have to be. We'll go over some of the functionality at a later time. So here we go. Let's take our tour of the Swell Division. And it is played from the top keyboard here. So anything that I play will be on the top one. So here we go. Once again, we have different family of tones. We have metal pipes, we have wooden pipes, we have reed pipes. And the Swell Division has, if you'll notice, a whole lot more than the Great Division. And that is very helpful in a lot of situ situations. Situations. I love that one. There you go. There's a new word for you. All right. So anyway, in this one, we have some more uh, tones uh, from the orchestra. And we have some more tones that are specifically from the organ alone. You won't find them anywhere else. So in uh, and if you remember from the last video, the, n the number below each of the name is the lowest pipe in that particular rank of pipes, that is the length of the pipe. So in this case, it's eight feet. And this is a gems horn. This is a wooden note, and it has a very soft, low, deep tone to it. And it's very quiet. very quiet, very soft, very deep tone. And uh, it also has a celeste rank. Now this one does not sp specifically designate a number, a Roman numeral, like this one does. This one is a two rank celeste on a flute. This one is just one pipe speaking on each note. And it's an actual metal pipe. And it speaks with a different, slightly different, well, I guess wouldn't be as slightly, with a much different tone. But still, it is a gems horn sound, but it's a celeste, so it has a much more brighter tone, and, it, and the tone is more full and more rich, which gives it the celeste designation. And here's the two of them together. So uh, that is um, the gems horn. So one is metal, one is wooden. And you draw them at different times to create a different effect. Now the next one that we have is part of the metal family of tones and part of the tones that you will only find on the organ. It is a Gigan principle. So it is basically a different version of the eight foot principle that is over here on the great division. So it is just a different version of that and it speaks with its lowest tone at eight feet. So, and it sounds like this. So here you can tell the difference between the two. Here's the principle on the grate. Here 
is the both of those together? So you can kind of hear the difference between the tone a little bit. So that is a Gigan principle at eight feet. And it's basically, it's tuned slightly, well, they all be too, about, tuned about the same. But this one is basically um, just a different mouse shape or a different shape of the pipe uh, to create a slightly different tone. So you have in the four foot category on the swell, you have another principal pipe, which is called a prestant. And this one speaks at four. Its lowest note sounds like this. Very big uh, uh, metal pipe. So you can tell that the, uh, the tone is pretty broad because the pipe itself would actually be not extremely large, but a little bit larger than, say, the four-foot octave. There's the swell. And here they are together. You can hear actually a slight dissonance between the two notes of because of the different type of pipe that they are. And it all again, it just comes down to size of pipe. It comes down to the size of the mouth and uh, how the mouth is actually what we call cut up. So um, how the mouth is actually opened up. So um, that is pretty much. And then on this particular division, if you remember over here, we had a four rank mixture. Well, on this one, we have a three rank mixture. And this one speaks a little bit more loudly and has a much brighter tone than the four rank mixture, or a little bit softer tone because this is only three sets of pipes instead of four on the grate. And I'll play them together here at the end here. And so you can hear the tone from that. So that pretty much makes up the principal family on the swell division. So you have all three of those together, which is this. So it's a very bright, broad tone, but actually sounds quite different than the principal division on the grate. So here's the grate one again. Here's the swell again. And here they are together. That is your standard organ tones. And um, those are tones that you will not find on any other instrument. The organ is the only one that has them, okay? Kind of following that same thing is a tone called the Bordon, and it is at eight feet pitch, and it's a wooden pipe with a wooden tone. So it speaks at eight feet. Here it is. And again, like the Gedact on the grate, you can actually hear the sound of the wind going through each one of the notes. So it creates a very good, soft, low tone. Its brother in kind or sister in kind is the copula, speaking at four foot pitch. It's the lowest note is here, so that would be a four foot pitch, okay, and it's played. So you couple the two of those together. So you 
have the two of those together. This swell division actually has a two foot wooden tone. It's called a flute a beck. And it speaks at two feet, so its lowest tone is here. It's a nice woodsy tone at, at two feet. So that literally means that the lowest note in that particular rank of pipes is two feet tall. So, and it speaks like this. So you actually add all three of those together. And you get a nice soft wood tone at a four, at an eight, four, and two foot pitch. Now, we have, in this organ, <clears throat> we have different numbers. Oh, that's not your standard 842, is it? No, it's not. And there's a reason behind that. It's because these are different lengths. This, the lowest note in this, is two and two thirds. And does not sound like you would think it sounds. Here is a two foot middle C. Or let's do low C. Low C on the keyboard. And if you notice different from a piano, the organ has 61 keys instead of 88. There are large organs that have 88 because they control actual pianos. And we'll go over some of that stuff at a later time, but right now, for this demonstration, most organs have 61 and 32 down below on the pedals. So this is a two foot pitch. This is a two and two thirds. Watch out here. Ah, that sounds a little bit different, doesn't it? So you combine the two of those together. You get a really cool tone. Uh, same works for this little guy here. This is a Nazard. And this is a Tierce. And its lowest note is one and three fifths. So that literally means for these two, the lowest note in this particular stop is two and two thirds feet tall. This is one and three fifths feet tall. So it sounds like this. Here is its lowest note. It's almost like I change keys now, isn't it? <laughs> so here we go. Here is the one and three, one and three and three fifths, two and two thirds, and the two all together on the low C. Very, very interesting tone. Now, if you notice in some of this demonstration, if you can achieve stereo sound from a cell phone camera, okay, that's fine. If you can, you will probably hear that you're hearing sounds from different sides of the organ. What this does is this basically, in a digital organ, simulates the fact that not all pipes can be located in the same chamber. Or, in a lot of cases, if the pipes are exposed on the front, obviously, since we know the laws of physics say that two objects cannot be in the same location at one point in time, unless you're not from this space-time continuum, but that's for a much, much, much later video. But anyway, uh, so we will obviously know that a low note, and we'll use these pipe speakers here as an example, and say hi to Kim and... and Little me and little David, okay? A little David from the Bible. Okay, so you obviously can see that a lower note is on this end and a higher note is on this end. So the sound's gonna come from a different location. So in this particular organ with two speakers, one on either side, part of the sound will come from one side, part of the sound will come from the other. And um, on this particular organ, the way that it's voiced is the swell division plays from the left side the great division plays from the right side. So um, if you hear a great tone, it's probably coming from the right side. If you hear a swell tone, it is probably coming from the left side. And still partially 
uh, part of that great tone will come out of the left and part of the swell tone will come out of the right. It's just creating that very wonderful stereo field that we're enjoying and gives you a very nice warm, broad sound that basically surrounds you. So, sorry to pause in the middle of that, but that kind of gives you an explanation of maybe why you're hearing sound coming from one side and not the other, assuming I'm recording in stereo sound and assuming it'll transfer over when the video is created and you can actually hear it. So continuing along in our little journey in the swell department, we have covered these little guys here, which are oddballs. From the uh, other side, you will know there's a tremulant here also. So uh, we can turn that on and anything. So like we'll pull out these wood tones. So here's the straight wood tone. Now here it is with the tremulant, which as remember from the last video, is a little motor that spins a weight on top of the reservoir, which pushes the reservoir down, which creates different air pressures at a steady rate. So that's what creates that vibrating sound. So here's the tremulant on. Well, here's without. Here's with it on. The tone kind of goes up and down a little bit with a little bit of waviness. That is very, very useful in a lot of cases where you're playing a slow, dramatic piece of music where you need just a little bit more action going on, not just a straight little tone, but you want to create a little bit more feeling, things that we will go over later on. Now the reed division in this particular swell division has three, three different reeds. One is a color reed because it's quieter than the other one. And the other two are much louder than the first one. And if you want to care to guess, I'll give you a second to guess at which is louder and which is softer. Okay, for those who are probably know a little bit about organs, I will tell you, here's your color read. Here is your solo read. Here is your solo read. Okay, and you will see why right now. Okay. This is where we're going to introduce a 16-foot note. Ooh, it gets interesting from here. Much bigger. And as we know, 8 is littler than 16. So that's going to sound twice as low as this. And the math works the same. This will sound twice as high as this. And so on down the line. So, in this one we have a color reed, which is an oboe. A color reed is a very softer reed. It's not very loud. It's not very pronounced. So it is a much softer... Uh, it's still a reed. It's still loud, don't get me wrong. But it is a much softer tone than a loud, blaring reed that's very loud, which I'll turn on next. So those of you who want loud can have loud. So here we go. Here is a color reed. This is an, abo, an oboe. Sorry, with my English is not the best sometimes. Um, and its lowest note is here. Speaks at eight foot pitch. And so it plays like this. And just once you're wondering, in case you're wondering what a high reed sounds like. And no, a real oboe, unless broken, I guess, would never play that high. Um, but in the organ, you have such dynamic range and things you can't do with normal orchestral instruments. Um, unless they're broken, very badly broken, I guess in this case would be. But anyway, we are going to continue on. And that was an oboe at eight feet. And so here is, um, wait for it. For all those who wanted loud, here's loud. This is a trumpet. And yes, that is very imitative of a trumpet. Is a trumpet a reed instrument? No, it is not in real life. But in the organ, in order to simulate it, it is a reed. And a trumpet, an oboe is going to be a much smaller diameter pipe. And it will have a, a flare 
is so it will start off very, very small and it will become very, very big at the top of the pipe. Um, and both the trumpets and the oboes do that and the bassoon will do that too. Um, but not to, not, not as much, it won't flare out as much as these two will. It's just the design of the pipes. Uh, so here's an eight foot trumpet on this organ with this particular sound setup. It is pretty loud. Here's an eight foot pitch. <laughs> It's a very loud eight foot trumpet. Um, and that is a solo reed. That is for when, and what do I mean by a solo reed? A solo reed is where you are in a piece of music, you're playing along, you're playing along, and all of a sudden you want to emphasize one particular passage. That is where you pull that reed out, and it is loud, it emphasizes that, and everybody knows that's a different passage of music. And if the reed in the real pipe is really loud, everybody's going to hear it <laughs> very, very loudly. So also we have in the solo reed, uh, it's almost a color reed because it's kind of softer, but not quite a 16 foot bassoon. So yes, the largest pipe in this particular stop is 16 feet tall. If it was a real pipe, which it's no, we not, we know that it's not on this organ. So here we go. Here is it's low C. So here it is, higher up. It's a pretty handy stop, but I don't normally draw it unless I need some more really dramatic low tones. So here's the three of them together, and yeah, this is going to be loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> So that is the swell division. That is a reed section, uh, again designated in red. And here's another hint to a later video. I will tell you what these little dots mean. They are not on every organ. So here we go. Uh, that is the swell division, obviously played by here. And uh, let me, while we're in here, uh, we've got another couple minutes that we can play. Let me kind of give you a full great experience and I will kind of give you a um let's go ahead and add a crumb horn to this one or a crumb horn the, the there is a crumb horn and there is a crumb horn they are different they're basically kind of the same pipe but what we'll notice later on in different videos is that the fact that organ companies and different organ builders call things differently so sometimes you will have it called a principal, or sometimes you'll have it called a principal with a Z in the middle of it, a principal. So it can be a little bit different. So let's do a full grate. Let's take the swell, move it to the grate, and we'll do Gigan principal, Prestant, copula, two foot, and ah, that'll be fine. So here is what the full grate and swell sound like. And so that is a tour of the Swell Division for you today. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Press the like button if you like it. If you don't like it, well, hit the dislike button. That way I know you didn't like it, and it's okay. Doesn't hurt my feelings. I can handle it. It's all good. So here you go. Here's the Swell Division. The next video will be about the Pedal Division. So stay tuned for that, because that's where loads of good stuff happen, is in the Pedal Division. <laughs> so stay tuned, and hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.